Good morning, folks. Got a range of topics to discuss this morning, and episode three of our latest series came out last night. Let us begin with the big bright thing in the sky. Over at spaceweathernews.com, we find the last 24 hours on our star were very calm as the large trans-equatorial coronal hole spins through. We've seen no solar flares or significant eruptions, plasma filaments dancing around a large portion of the visible limb periphery, but they are small and not making too many CMEs. Let's look at the solar wind, because while the intensified stream appears to have missed Earth, we are still below 400 kilometers per second. We also have yet to see the magnetic connection to the current coronal hole point from Sun directly to Earth. Up in blue, phi angle dances top and bottom of that panel, but the seismic alert waits for the 180 degree mark in the middle. That would be expected today, sort of expected it yesterday actually, and of course the solar wind from the coronal hole has about 48 hours until it arrives. Now while the phi angle precluded an official earthquake watch just yet, and we didn't get anything huge, we did get a rumble on the southeastern flank of Etna that is way too big for comfort. Ten injured in the tremor, but the real story is that after the first flank eruption in a decade, we do not want to see any slippage there. Not only would it send tens to hundreds of thousands of people into the water, but the tsunami would devastate the coastal regions across nearly the entire eastern Mediterranean. Greece, southern Italy, would be devastated. 5.1 isn't far away from what it would take to slide out. Opposite ends of the scale coming next. First, we are at the onset of a major heat wave in Australia. Forecasts are for serious heat towards the end of the year. Meanwhile, the story is flipped in India. Delhi, not only seeing daily high temperatures break the record low mark, but the temperature is dropping to record lows at night as well. This will go down as one of the worst winters in Delhi history. Let's go to the cosmos, and by watching supernova, they are attempting to use the South Africa telescope to constrain dark energy. Of course, the reason this is needed is because they can't find it, don't know what it is, can't explain it, but despite all of that, the South Africa telescope has done its side of the job with the supernova and is proving to be a top facility. Up next, it's the sun. In studying records from the great 1956 solar storm, good news, bad news, and that the good news is that if it happened again and you are on a plane at mid or low latitude, Earth's magnetic field could protect you. Could. Bad news is that word was could, and Earth's magnetic field has been weakening consistently by the year. Good news is that we have yet another prediction of an upcoming weak solar cycle. This is good, obviously, because chances of super flares go down, but of course, it continues our march towards grand solar minimum, which could begin as early as 2030. Lastly, folks, you recall the Antarctic ice mass animation. Well, they've pulled the last frame for an article meant to explain global warming over at the Earth Observatory, but they should have picked something else. In trying to explain the increased mass across most of the continent, they blamed an increase in cold and snowy days. By the way, that peninsula split in half on the left side. That cannot be atmospheric. That is all ocean-driven and below. Folks, we released episode three of Earth's catastrophe cycle last night. The $21 trillion issue and various digressions follow as being related to it. Highly recommended and linked for you below the video. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.30 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.